Hi boys and girls, welcome back to the fifth and sixth grade science class. And so today, this is for March 23rd. So you may be watching it on March 23rd. I hope you're watching it on March 23rd. So I've been doing this. This is my second time doing this. Give me some feedback below. How is this working for you guys? Is this good? Do you feel like you're understanding what's going on? If you have any questions, you can always have your mom send an email to Miss Sylvie, or you can write it below in the comments. Just kind of let me know how, how it's going for you, okay? Okay, so to get started, um, CPC is going to be having a drop-off pickup day for different um, assignments. And so I have a little chart here. So on Tuesday, March 24th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., anytime along that time, you can come in and you're gonna turn in to me these three assignments. So activity manual 195 and 196, the chapter 12 test, and activity manual 211 and 212. I will leave there for you to pick up whenever you drop these off, you can pick up activity manual page 192, I think that's right, and uh, the chapter 11 test. Um, some of you turned in some extra stuff and I'm all caught up with the grading and so that will be there for you to pick up. Um, I don't know exactly how this is going to work. We're all just being flexible and so anytime from 9 to 2 you can um, come and drop these things off and pick these things up. Um, science fair. We're still going ahead with science fair. and. I'm hoping we're back in the classroom and that we can do that all together. If not, Miss Sylvia is already working on a plan B. You know, as I lay there at night before I go to sleep and I think about my class and I think about all you guys, I think about a plan B for our science fair. So I have a plan B, but I'm hoping that we're just back in class and we can just go with our plan A. Regardless, science fair will be due on our last class, which is May 4th. And the whole idea of science fair is that we are breaking this big project up into little tiny pieces. So last Monday, what was due to Miss Sylvie was your science fair topic, okay? And that is gonna be in the form of a question. The question that you're trying to answer with your experiment. I am missing that from four people. And so I sent an email to your mom saying, hey, I'm still missing this, please send this to me. And so if you're watching this and you haven't had a conversation with mom about what your science fair topic is, please have that conversation. I sent a list, oh my goodness, probably 300 different topics and they're just to get the juices flowing. You don't have to pick one of those. You can jump off of that topic if you want to. It's just to kind of get your ideas going about what science fair topic you wanna do. And it should be in the form of a question, a question or problem that you're trying to answer. So I'm missing four of those. Please send those to me ASAP. That means as soon as possible. Okay, and then due uh, today, Monday, March 23rd, in an email is your science fair procedure. Step by step, what you're going to do in order to answer this question that you've already posed, okay? And if you need some help with how that's supposed to look, you know, I have right here, I have John's science fair binder. And so back in here, um, behind his lab tab are all these labs. And if Miss Sylvie made it, it's very, I have procedures step-by-step step what we're gonna do in each particular um, experiment that Miss Sylvie writes up. So any of these ones that have the cute little borders usually, See the procedures here, step by step, what we're doing. So this can kind of give you an idea of what this is supposed to look like. Uh, that one, that one, oh, here they are, procedures, step by step, what we're going to do, okay? So that can kind of give you an idea of how you're supposed to lay out your procedures. So those are there. If you need some help with how to write procedures, and I, you're gonna have your mom or you or somebody is gonna type them up and send them in an email to me. I will get them and I might tweak them a little bit, just make a few little changes here and there. Just maybe, just make sure that's really clear because in science, part of what we do in science is making sure that our science is 
clearly communicated to other people. The things that we learn, people are able to go and replicate that and build off of that. And so science is all about sharing information in the community. And we see that that is more important than ever right now. Okay, return date. This is our current return date, April 13th. And see, I, I just drew a smiley face and then I drew a like circle and the head and then I drew a little body and then I drew a little hair sticking. Anyway, it just kept went on. I probably could just keep drawing him and I decided to stop. So you're welcome. So we're gonna return right now. Our current return date is April 13th. All of that is subject to change. We're gonna be super flexible and listen to our government and things that they tell us and things that your mom tells you. And so um, usually we follow Fort Bend ISD. So if they're closed, that might be a good hint to check your email and see if CPC has done something like that. So um, anyway, so this is our current return date. There was a mistake on your syllabus on this glorious piece of paper here was a mistake. Previously, I had I had Good Friday on the wrong Friday. So this is the current one. I just made an adjustment. I went ahead and my mistake that said Good Friday, I just said go ahead and enjoy the day off. You can like go to the park or you can go outside and just smell the fresh air, go for a walk. So enjoy that day right there. Um, and then I moved Good Friday to here. And what all that I did, I didn't really change your assignments much. I just added extra, the extra pages. I just, instead of splitting your reading into two, I'm sorry, three days, I split it into two days. And so that's the only change there. So you can be off for Good Friday. Um, so I made that adjustment. If you're like, I'm not gonna take off for Good Friday, um, I'm just gonna keep working. Then you can keep the old syllabus, but I sent this to your parents in an email if you would like an update. I don't know how I messed that up, but you know Good Friday changes every year, so I must have just, you know, used an old syllabus and not made the adjust adjustments to that. That's what I think happened there. Whew, that was a lot of classroom business. Are you guys ready to learn about some genetics? All right, so we're gonna start with our vocabulary words. And here are our vocabulary words for our first half of our chapter. And so I'm gonna hold this here for 10 seconds on my end. On your end, feel free to pause it and write down these words. But remember, these come straight from your test. And so I am giving you the answers to three of your test questions right here. And you can always read these questions. I'm sorry, look over this vocabulary before you take your test. That will help you tremendously. So here are your words. Okay, those are our vocabularies. Let's talk about them. Traits. Traits are inherited physical characteristics. So your book talked about eye color, um, it can be the shape of your nose, any of those things are the traits. And I, my daughter was staring at me uh, just yesterday and I was like, uh, what are you doing? She goes, I think I have your nose. And I was like, I don't know. I, I think your nose might be a blend. So traits are kind of one of those things. Sometimes it's super obvious who you got your trait from. And sometimes it's kind of a blend and it can even be a recessive trait that you might have. If you read further about the pea plants and the dominant and recessive traits, then some of your traits might actually be recessive traits. Okay, heredity. Heredity is the passing of traits from parents to offspring. So your parents had you and those traits were passed on to you, their offspring. Cats and dogs. Dogs are fascinating. Dogs, you know, you can look at a dog and especially if it's a mixed breed dog, you're like, oh, he's got lab in him. Oh, I think he might have some schnauzer. So sometimes it's kind of fun. My husband loves dogs. And so whenever we see a dog that's a mixed breed, he starts to think about what, what were the parents like? Well, I wonder what kind of breed their parents were. So that's something that he likes to look at. So heredity is the passing of traits from parents to offspring. DNA, and we're gonna kind of focus on DNA today. DNA is the molecule 
the, oh, sorry, the molecule carrying the chemical code that tells cells what to do. And so this is found in your nucleus. We learned about that when we learned about cells and it's all twisted up. And if you read the very first page of your chapter, you saw that if you took one strain of DNA and stretched it out, I think it said it was six feet long, but if you took all the DNA and the entire human body, you'd go to the sun and back 300 times, I think is what they said. This is all from memory, so I'm not exactly sure that that is absolutely correct. You can check me, you can pause this right now and see if I'm onto it or not. If I'm wrong, tell me in the comments below. Okay, and so our DNA, and we have it all over our body and it's unique to us. The only way that it would not be 100% unique to you is if you had an identical twin. And we have identical twins at our church and they look exactly alike, exactly alike. And sometimes I'm really glad one of them cut their hair shorter and that really helped me to be able to tell them apart. And so I actually had a conversation with one of them. She, they're both in college. And I, told, I realized later that I was asking her questions as though she were the other sister. I felt terrible about it. I couldn't tell, couldn't tell them apart. And so DNA is unique to you unless you have an identical twin. And I don't think any of you do, unless you're hiding them somewhere. Unless you'll like switch out or something and like one of you comes to class one week or the other. Comment below if that's happening. I would, I would be very fascinated to know if that's something that's happening. Anywho, so DNA is the molecule carrying the chemical code that tells cells what to do. And this is what makes you up, and this is what tells your body to make your body look the way it looks and do the things that it does. It's all based on your DNA. It's the information in your cell. Okay, so those are our vocabulary words for this lesson today. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to extract DNA from this strawberry. Yes, that's right. I'm gonna take its DNA out of it. It's a really weird looking strawberry, don't you think? Okay, so for this particular um, part of our lesson, I sent this page to your parents. So I hope you have that printed out and with you. If you don't, go ahead and pause the program and get that printed out so that you will have a copy of this. And on this as well, you can see our procedures. So if you need some help writing your science science fair procedures, that has some on there for you to kind of, you know, don't do them exactly like this, but you know, kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking for. So here's our problem. This is like your science fair problem that you sent. How can we see the DNA of a strawberry? It says one to three strawberries, about the volume of a golf ball. So I say that's about the size of a golf ball. It's just one giant strawberry. I opened carton and it was right there and I was like, hey, that makes it easy. We'll just use one giant strawberry. Okay, and it says 10 milliliters of DNA extraction buffer. And so I have that already measured out right here. This is my extraction buffer. Actually, I don't know if I measured it out. I will measure it out. I'll make sure I get that exactly right. And then it says two milliliters of ice cold isopropyl alcohol. And that is in my freezer right now. So I'm gonna go off camera in a little bit and get it from my freezer. That alcohol is very precious right now. And um, just to be clear, this is like rubbing alcohol, a medical alcohol. Like if you ever get a shot, they rub it with the alcohol, that's the kind of alcohol we're talking about. We're not talking about like alcohol that adults drink. And then we want one sandwich bag, check. One clear test tube, check. One funnel lined with cheesecloth, check. And three toothpicks. I think I have more than three, okay. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna read through the procedures and then you're gonna make a hypothesis, okay? Remove the green sepals from the strawberries. Place strawberries into a sandwich bag and seal shut. Squish for a few minutes to completely squash the fruit. Add 10 milliliters of DNA extraction buffer, which is just soapy salt water. I put dish soap, salt, and water. That's all I did and squish for a few more minutes. Try not to make a lot of soap bubbles. Number five, 
Filter through a cheesecloth set in the funnel and collect the liquid in a clear tube. Do not squeeze, it says paper towel, but I actually use cheesecloth. Collect about three milliliters of liquid. Add two milliliters of ice cold isopropyl alcohol to the strawberry liquid in the tube. Pour the isopropyl alcohol carefully down the side of the tube so that it forms a separate layer on top of the strawberry liquid. Do not stir together. Watch for about a minute. What do you see? You should see a white fluffy cloud between the two liquids. That's DNA. Spin and stir toothpick in the tangle of DNA, wrapping the DNA around the toothpick. The fibers are thousands and millions of DNA strands. Draw a picture below of what you see. Rinse your funnel, put the sandwich bag and cheesecloth in the garbage. So if we were doing in this class, th sorry, if we were doing this in class, each table would have their own setup. But since we're not in class, I'm gonna demonstrate it for you, okay? So go ahead and write your hypothesis right here. If we separate the DNA of the strawberry, then we will see, go ahead and write down what you think we're gonna see when we separate out the DNA of the strawberry from the rest of the strawberry. Go ahead and pause the program and write down what you think you'll see. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna turn this so that I can see it, but you have your page in front of you. First thing we're gonna do is remove the green sepials from the strawberry. Now, remember when we learned about flowers, the sepials were this way and the flower was this way. Remember, we saw that? And in a little bit, I'm gonna show you my strawberries outside when we're done with this experiment. So these are the sepials. We're gonna remove that from the strawberry. as best as I can. Okay. And then it says place the strawberry in a sandwich bag and seal shut. And this is the fun part. Then we're going to squish for a few minutes. It's a little bit cold. It feels weird. Squishy. And squish for a few minutes to completely squash, ooh, did you hear that? <laughs> to completely squash the fruit. Have some big chunks in there still. It was a big strawberry. Okay. And the next thing we're gonna do is add 10 milliliters of this DNA extraction buffer. And then I have this tiny little thing here. Oop. Okay. So now I'm going to add this extraction buffer to my strawberry. And I'm going to squish for a few more minutes trying not to make a lot of soap bubbles. Not really sure what that means. Probably not, basically I think that means don't shake it, smoosh it, don't shake it. Yeah. There's a hard piece there. I think that's some of the sepial that got, that like the little stem on the top I got left. Okay, I think that's pretty good. What do y'all think? Keep going. It is quite satisfying. It's like one of the slime videos, you know? I can't watch those though. They kind of gross me out. Okay, here we go. The next thing we're going to do is filter through a cheesecloth and collect the liquid in a clear tube. We want to collect about 10 milliliters. So, I'm sorry three milliliters. <sighs> what I'm kind of thinking might be a good idea is to collect it in here and then pour it in here. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna put this in here like this. Ooh, this is when a partner really helps. And then I'm going to pour that in there. Let's see, that might be enough. Give it a little shimmy, shimmy shake. Okay, let me get a little bit more. Mm. 
We're getting there. We almost have three milliliters. Mm. All right. Now I'm going to put this three milliliters in here. And I'm going to ask my cameraman to reach out his left hand and hold this. <laughs> it's Mr. Sylvie. And I'm going to go get the rubbing alcohol, the isopropyl alcohol, off camera from my freezer. Because it needs to be ice cold. And I am supposed, I'm going to go ahead and measure out two milliliters. And what I'm supposed to do, it says, pour it carefully down, the, I got it, thank you, down the side of the tube so that it's in a separate layer. Okay, and then do not stir. Watch for about a minute. Oh, look, do you see the little bubbles going up? Can y'all see the bubbles? Maybe it's on the other side of my cup. You can see the bubbles? Watch for about a minute. And then it says, what do you see? You should see a white fluffy cloud between the two liquids. Do we see a white fluffy cloud? Mm. I don't see a white fluffy cloud, but I do see like a goo right there. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, and then what it says, it says that that's DNA, and then it says to take a toothpick, oh, I can't reach my toothpick in there, and to spin and stir, oh, do you see it? Oh, that's D, oh, did you see it? That's DNA, you see these little threads that are coming out? Mr. Sylvie, are you able to get it on that camera? Let me try it again with another toothpick. I'm realizing my toothpicks are kind of short. Can you see those threads? See that thread? Can you see it on the camera, Mr. Silly? Yes? Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this sit a little bit longer and then I'm gonna try to get um, a microscope out and see if I can get a uh, slide for y'all so you can see it. You know what, I have, Mr. Sylvie, can you hold this for a second? I'm gonna get um, like uh, tweezers so that I can get that toothpick down in there further. if I can do this. And then what I'm going to do is I will put together a slide and I'll have a separate, if it works, if I can get it to where you can see it, I'm going to get, a, I'll get that on the, um, oh yeah, I can really get that in there now. Usually a big old chunk of goo comes up, and I'm not really seeing that. I wonder if our, our, um, oh, yeah, see, there's some right there. Ah, no! 
<laughs> okay. If you look real close, you can see some like gooey threads is kind of how I would describe it. How's it going? Can we see on that camera okay? Not really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to tip it a little. Well, what I'm going to try to do is get a slide for you guys. And so that you can see that. And I can't get my toothpick in there much further. I wonder if maybe we filtered too much. I can see some little threads. Like if you look real close, you can see some threads there. See the little threads that are kind of spinning? It looks like goo kind of in the middle. Oh, it's starting to come up. You see them? That's little pieces of DNA that are spinning around in there. Can you see them moving? The little goo from the alcohol. Okay. So go ahead <laughs> and draw a picture below of what you see. And so like right in here, is some of that goo, the stringy goo is the DNA. So you can be still. Okay, my cameraman's helping me to know what y'all can see. Can y'all see it? You can see the little stringy goose, sort of. I'm gonna try to get a slide together for you so that I can show you in the microscope. Don't move it. <laughs> okay, all right, let's move on. We have some questions. Oh man, I have quite a mess here. I don't really have a safe place to put that. Okay. All right, so we have some questions here for us to answer down below. So right here, you have questions one through seven. So go ahead and answer those. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you pause the program so that you can answer these questions, one through seven. Okay, so number one, was your hypothesis correct? Why or why not? If you were expecting to see double helix, I bet you were a little disappointed because it's really just stringy goo. Um, we will pull it, I, I will try to get a microscopic slide going for you so that you can see it. Um, but so go ahead and write why or why not. Uh, number two, why do you think you had to mash up the strawberry? What, what were, why do you think we would need to mash up the strawberry? Okay, well, a cell is intact. We had to bust open those cells in order to get the DNA out. So we had to mash them up. We had to kind of mash up the cells to basically free the DNA. So why do you think we added the soap? Hint, what does soap do when you wash your hands? There's been a lot of talk lately in the news about washing your hands. I want you to think about your hands being really, really, really dirty. If you just use water, would that so would the dirt come off very easily? Not really. What does the soap do? The soap kind of breaks down the dirt, right? It breaks down the stuff that's on your hand. So it did the same thing for the strawberry. It broke down those cells. It destroyed the cells even further so that we could um, be able to get the DNA out. What does DNA look like? Now, this is just DNA in general. They are strings of double helix. So they're long and stringy. Usually they're kind of bunched up and coiled in the nucleus because it kind of talks about that in your chapter. And it's in the shape of a double helix. You could just write double helix there and I would be pleased as punch with that. Since the strawberries were once living and we extracted DNA from them, what does this mean about the foods you eat? Oh my goodness. If the foods we're eating were once alive, that means that we eat DNA. 
Does that blow your mind a little bit? Eating DNA? That's crazy, isn't it? Anyway, I thought that was cool. Remember that DNA contains genes that control traits. What are some traits that strawberries may have? Okay, for strawberries, what are some different things that, I mean, this one was a really big giant strawberry, right? So some different traits, and you can just think about strawberries in general when you eat a strawberry. What are some different things about it? We can talk about the size, the shape, the color. Um, we can talk about um, the sepals, maybe even the plant itself. I don't know if strawberry flowers come in different colors the way pea plants do, but maybe that's something that has something to do with it. I don't know. You can put a question mark by that one and do a little research later. Number seven, if you were to do this experiment again, what would you change? What would you do differently? And I can tell you right now something that Sylvie would do differently. I'm wondering if I filtered the strawberry mixture too much. I wonder if I, ooh, it looks gross, Mr. Sylvie. This is my trash area. Don't look at my trash area. <laughs> I'm wondering if I should have just used one piece of cheesecloth instead of two. I wonder if that would have been better. And I'm kind of wondering if I doubled the amounts of things, if I would have more DNA, like twice as much strawberries and twice as much isopropyl alcohol. And I think maybe that would have been better. I don't know. These are questions I have. And so that's something that I would write there. Okay, so strawberry DNA investigation. You can put this behind your lab tab. If you do not have a three hole punch so that you can do that, Here's a cool trick. You can take a piece of paper, um, like what we write, oh, I'm back. Uh, like what we write our words on in the back of our, our uh, binder, just a regular lined sheet of paper like this. And you can hold it up like this. And if you have a handheld hole punch, you can go punch, punch, punch in those holes. And then you'll have perfectly spaced out holes to be able to put it behind your lap tab. Okay, that's just a little trick if you um, have don't have a three-hole punch like Miss Sylvie does. But I'm kind of thinking about getting a giant three-hole punch because I always hole punch all your stuff and um, I'm just kind of finding that it takes me a while. So if I just have like a really hefty duty one then I can go whoosh, and I could do like all your papers at one time. That would be very satisfying for me. So that's something that I'm kind of thinking about investing in. Okay, so moving on. Next, what you need is you need this page from your activity manual. This is page 209, page 209. So go ahead and pull this page out of your activity manual. Oh, before we go much further, I told you I was gonna show you my strawberries while we're still talking about strawberries. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys outside and show you my strawberries. We don't have too far to go. It's just right outside. Okay, so this is my strawberry plant here. I told you I would give you an update. And this is that one that we were looking at last time. Look, it looks like a little strawberry. It's like a little green strawberry. And there's a little friend right next to it. See the little seeds on there? And that's probably gonna turn into a strawberry. I hope that turns into a strawberry. There's a little bud in there. Hopefully that turns into a strawberry. So I might get like, I don't know, five little strawberries. <gasps> Is there more? That's another bud in there. Maybe that will be a strawberry. Oh, look over here. This is a nice big strawberry. Well, I say big. He's not big yet. He will become big. And then here's two little ones here. You see these two little ones? And then I got a couple flowers and it looks like I have some more flowers coming in there. So this little guy, if the birds don't get it, which I think I might put some kind of like cage around it or something. If the birds don't get it, I might get like 10 strawberries and that's not too shabby. I have one there. Oh man, look. Right there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strawberries right now in the work, in the works. That's 
great news and this was a gift from a friend so that was a pretty nice gift and this soil even though it looks really dry it's still kind of damp let's check out mr sylvie's pepper oh no mr sylvie it was here you didn't come and get it did you oh i don't know what happened to it it was like right here right Oh, that's sad, Mr. Sylvie. I don't know what happened. Are you okay? Okay. <laughs> and then I, something's growing here. I, play, I planted some peppers in here. And finally, I think I might get something growing. Okay. And then I put some cilantro over here, but I don't think... Oh, yeah. I think that might be a cayenne pepper plants but I don't know pepper plants not doing so great all right but my strawberry plants doing wonderfully so that's good news all right let's go back to DNA and take out activity manual page 209. If you need to pause the program to do that, feel free to pause the program to take out page 209. I also would like you to turn in your book to page 313. 313. Hold it like that. Can you just on the numbers? 313. Okay. Pause the program if you need a little more time. Okay. All right. So we are looking at DNA, our double helix. And I'm going to go ahead and read this page. And I want you to answer the questions. And feel free to pause the program between the questions to be able to answer them. What are bases? Number two. In a DNA molecule, only certain bases fit together. Which bases fit together? Base A fits with base blank. Base G fits with base blank. Go ahead and fill in those blanks. Pause the program if you need more time. Number three, the order in which the bases are arranged creates the code or blank for each gene. Go ahead and pause the program to answer that question. Okay, what are bases? Well, the answer comes from our book. And I did not cheat and, and uh, get the, the answers on the answer. So what are bases? Okay, so these are four basic molecules of DNA. Okay, we have four basic molecules of DNA. That's what our bases are. Base A fits with base T. And so I have a little way to help you remember that base A fits with base T. Apple tart. Apple tarts are delicious. So base A, apple, fits with base T, tart. Apple tart, A and T, okay? And our next one is base G fits with base C. Grape cotton candy is also delicious. Grape cotton candy. G fits with base C. So that's just kind of a little way to help you remember um, that A and T go together, apple tart and G and C, great cotton candy, okay? So just a little way to help you remember. The order in which the bases are arranged creates the code or blank for each gene. So it says right here on the bottom, the order in which the bases are arranged creates the code or pattern for each gene. You see that there? That's the answer, pattern. Now, 
This page wants us to use, um, they, they call them Chanel wires, um, I, 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 uh, pipe cleaners, that's what I call them. They're like long and bendy. And I just thought, you know, I think there's something that we can do that might be a little more fun than that. And so I thought that we should use Twizzlers and colored marshmallows because these things are delicious. And I know that if I bring this into my classroom, my students will interest, instantly be interested in what we're learning about, right? Right. Oh, my cameraman agrees. Okay. Y'all watch him. He might sneak a couple marshmallows when we're not looking. Okay. So at this time, we are going to, oh, I have two paper plates. Good. Um, at this time, we're going to go ahead and create our DNA. Now, I want our colors to match um, the colors of our marshmallows. And I just bought like the traditional jet puffed fun mallows, mallows, marshmallows, okay? And so these colors that they have below don't match the colors. Oh, let me flip this. These colors they have below don't match the colors of our marshmallows, but we need them to, okay? And so we have green, yellow, red, but instead of the blue, we want to change this blue, mark that out, make a new box, we want to use orange because those are the colors, those are the colors of our marshmallows, okay? And at this time, you can go ahead and use your colored pencils to plan your DNA molecule model on the diagram. Remember to combine the bases correctly. Remember, A and T, they're BFFs. So your A and your T need to be together and your C and your G, they're BFFs. Remember, apple tart, uh, grape cotton candy. So go ahead and uh, plan out your DNA however you would like on the chart below, making sure that you have green and red together and you have orange and yellow together, okay? Now, this is John's page, so I am not gonna fill it in because I want him to do this when he watches me, um, when you guys, like the way you guys are gonna watch me. So I am not gonna fill this page in right here. And um, I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and do that. So go ahead and pause the program and you go ahead and fill in the chart, making your own DNA however you want to, as long as you're making sure that your A and your T are together and your C and your G. You can have A here and T here, or T here, I'm sorry, or A here and T here. You, it doesn't have to be A, T. You could do T, A, okay? So I just wanna let you know that they can flip just as long as they're matched together. So however you want to do that. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you have filled in your chart. And if your chart is all filled in, then we can now begin to create our DNA. And I have scissors. I think we're gonna have hot chocolate tonight. I think that would be really fun with this. <laughs> okay. Oh, and we also need our Twizzlers. They smell very good as well. My mom loves licorice. I do not love licorice. But they also make like, these are called licorice whips, but they taste like strawberry. Okay, so we have our two rungs of our DNA. And we have our toothpicks and we're going to create our DNA. And so I'm gonna start with A, so my green, and T, apple tart. And I'm gonna make that my first rung. Oops, and I'm gonna stab my licorice. 
like that. And you go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and just create mine as I go. You make sure that you're following what you have on your page. And I'm gonna make mine and you make yours. And then we're gonna do something really cool at the end. This is when I wish I knew how to edit videos so I can make some like DNA making. You know what, that might be easier just to stab it. Maybe I'll just stab it all along 10, 10 times, right? Four more. Seven. And, and, and ten. Okay, and now I'm going to continue to create. Uh oh, that one I just stabbed him crooked. There, he's okay. a tiny one. All right, I got mine all together and I'm going to stab it on the other end without stabbing myself. That is the trick. Don't stab yourself. Oh! <laughs> Some of you may have better toothpicks than I have. I have the flat ones. I think the little pokey ones might be better. This is working. Okay, so you have your ladder and then it's missing something. It's missing the double helix. But this is my favorite part. Look, it looks like DNA. Is that not the coolest thing? So there's our double helix and there's our DNA model. I think it's a pretty good one, y'all, because we're able to see the code that is there with our molecular bases and we're able to see our double helix and it smells delicious, right? Like fruit. I mean, those are the best models, the ones that are made out of food, right? Okay, so there is our double helix. So I hope you're able to do this and see this with your licorice whips and your colored marshmallows at home. And you have three questions there on the bottom. So go ahead and answer those questions and we'll go over them. Pause the program to answer those questions. Okay. Compare your DNA model, molecule model with that of another student. Did he have the same model as yours? So I can be your other student. Compare your model to mine. Is it exactly the same? I bet it's different because I did something weird where I repeated one, two, three, four different, um, I the same combination four times. I bet you didn't do that. I bet you were a little more creative than that. So um, I bet yours looks different from Miss Sylvie's. And so that would just be, did he have the same model as yours? Did she have the same model as yours? Yes or no? So I would say probably no. Uh, number two, a real DNA molecule has more than 10 rungs. 
do you think it is possible for DNA molecules to have the same patterns? If we only have 10 rungs and mine is different from yours and probably everybody else's, then it's pretty likely that the more rungs we have, the more different it's going to be. Number three, what are some ways people use DNA testing? And your book talked about this. It talked about the tomb of the unknown soldier and how they DNA, uh, they get the DNA from soldiers so that if something were to happen to them, they would know for sure who they were. They also do DNA to solve crimes. So if something bad happens and someone has some DNA left at the scene, they're able to test that DNA and to be able to find out um, if they were the one who was the criminal or not. Um, my parents have both sent in their DNA for, um, I, it's, it, I, don't, I don't know why they did it. I, it's like 23andMe, I think is the name of the company. And I think my dad may have done it because he was wondering, um, his, his dad died very young. And I think he was wondering if he also had the same heart disease as his father. And so um, that DNA, it came back and it told him that, that he would live, it predicted how long he was going to live, that he would live into his 90s, which his mother did. So maybe he was thinking, okay, good, I don't have heart disease. I don't really know. Um, and then uh, he also found out that he had some distant cousins from that DNA testing. So DNA is fascinating and it's kind of like a fingerprint that lets you know all sorts of things about yourself. Um, your DNA is unique, your fingerprints are unique, and your retina in your eye is also unique. So all of those things are unique to you. So boys and girls, that's what I have for you today. Those two activities. So make sure to go ahead and put this, this one's already hole punch for you, which is nice. Go ahead and put this behind your lab tab. And I look forward to seeing all of your work that you turn into me on Tuesday. And if you want to, feel free to leave me a little note saying, hey, Miss Sylvie, hope you're doing great because I miss you guys. I really do. This isn't quite the same. Okay, have a great week and I'll see you on April 13th. If not sooner, maybe, probably not. Anyway, okay, bye.